Wanna be the person that you call up when you're down Wanna be the first who knows all of your deepest secrets Can I be the one who wakes you up before you miss your ride Cause I wanna be close to you And I wanna show you something new You gotta know Every day I got your back, yeah, you can count on me for that So put your hand in mine, I will be there every day When you're sick of the climb, I will make sure it's okay I know you didn't ask for any of this But we reach for the sky, cause we're flying colors now So we're here with you today, Sam, and I suppose this is a bit more local to me than America yeah. anyway. <laughs> I managed to catch it in Cornwall at home. And I suppose you're the foreman for Fredericks mm -hmm. and you were lucky enough to get home for Christmas. Lucky or unlucky, one of the two, yeah. <laughs> a bit earlier than usual, I'm assuming. Yeah, about a week or two early. Yeah. When would your season start and when would your season finish? Harvesting seasons end of May until um, third week, fourth week in November. Mm -hmm. But I'd normally go out probably end of February, middle to end of February. And were you able, like, obviously, with COVID, were you able to get out there all right this year? Mm -hmm. I was, yeah. The band didn't come in until March, end of March. Mm -hmm. And I went out the 20 something of February. So I managed to get there before the travel ban. I mean, tell us about the journey. Travelling from state to state on like the time scale, how long does it normally take you? Because obviously you're going through six states uh, normally. Over the whole season, yeah. We, we travel to southwest Oklahoma or southern Oklahoma with the Texas border. Yeah. And um, we'd be there for probably three weeks at stop maybe. From there we'll go to southwest Kansas or northern Oklahoma, then eastern Colorado through Nebraska to South Dakota. That's our biggest move. Okay. How long? I mean, uh, mileage wise. 10 or 11 hours. It's five, oh, I want to say 525, 550 maybe. It's a full day of oversize and, yeah. and with all of you. It takes a yeah. long time. Um, but that's our longest move other than coming home from North Dakota, but that has to be split into two days. Yeah. To be really. fair. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so from Colorado to South Dakota and then on to um, Southern North Dakota before coming back in the middle of September-ish. And I suppose when the lads were out with you back in 2019, you were running S770s and then into the 780s into, in the fall. Mm -hmm. This year you've had the be all and end all, I suppose, of the John Deere combines. You had the X9 out yeah. trialing. Tell me a little bit about that. It's quite a jump up from a 770 <laughs> or even 780, really. Yeah, you were um, doing a good chunk of that yourself. Yeah, yeah, we all we all had a had a sort of go on it, but yeah, I did a I did a bit of it. Um, it's certainly a lot more power than the the ones before, and it's it's a huge step up from a 770, which is what they call a class seven. Mm -hmm. So a 780 would be what they call a class eight, yeah. and these are technically a class ten and class eleven, and so. They make two models, but we had the larger of the two, which That's is the, the 11, 1100, isn't 1100, it? 1100, yeah. And what makes it different to the other combines that John Deere offer? Uh, I think the biggest difference is the dual rotor okay. instead of a single. It has two slightly smaller rotors for the threshings. It's still a rotary combine, not like a sort of hybrid, but it's, uh, it's two rotors over one is the biggest increase. I mean, everything's larger, mm -hmm. but um, actually physically it isn't a huge amount. There's not a much bigger. difference, kind of size -wise. wise. It's probably a bit longer and looks larger because the insides are wider. Yeah. Um, 
And I suppose it depends what header you have on it too. It does, yeah, <laughs> it does. And I suppose <clears throat> what are, like you were saying obviously there about the twin rotors, like main features in the combine and in regards to output, have you found much in the way of difference there? It, it's a big jump up from a 770, yeah. You've got to go a lot faster to keep it full, even with a, we had a 45 foot header instead of a 40 that we normally have. Yeah. But it's just short of 700 horse, which, and the, you probably, I don't know what we are, on a 450 maybe on a 770. It's not all about power. No. But uh, that makes a big difference. Because you'd find obviously it would work better maybe in high moisture corn is what you were mm -hmm. saying. Yeah, and tough, it's designed for tough, damper, high yielding conditions really. So more up the north so, of the country. Mm -hmm. The south of the country, the, the yields probably aren't there and the conditions aren't there to really test it properly. But once you get up north and Canada would be too, we don't go there, but that would be a big market. And I think Europe too, higher yielding, tougher straw. And we cut 18 moisture wheat all day long in Europe where we don't in the States. Yeah. If it's 15, then you shut down until it's 14. So that helps too. Okay. And I suppose, tell me a little bit about like the directional spelt. That's obviously new on the combine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can, you can alter your spout to throw the grain on the unload and auger further away or towards you, which would help in some respects with controlled traffic um, farming, but not that we do, but if the grain cart's not exactly in the right place, you can just manage it from the cab. Mm -hmm. And in row crops, you can make sure that you, the, the grain cart tractor is running in between the rows rather than actually where it might need to be with a fixed spout to make the grain form the right space. Yeah. No. And tell us a little bit about the inside of the cab and the drive stick. What's really changed there? Um, the armrest has changed slightly. The hydro handle is the same as a 770 and it still has the Gen 4 Green Star display in there. Um, other than that, well, the seat is new. It's like the new tractors, I guess. More spin. <laughs> heated and cooled and it also has a, a massaging thing which is pretty nice. Yeah I suppose if you're spending however many hours a day in it like. <laughs> it stops your ass from going numb. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like advantages then of the track wheels like do you see Fredericks going forward with more harvesters using these or like in terms of like transportation? The tracks. The yeah. tracks are nice. They're not so easy to transport because of their weight. Mm -hmm. They're quite a bit more expensive. Um, for most of what we do where it's dry, dual wheels will be fine. Now in the mud, the tracks will go a lot further, but there's not actually much that we do in the mud really, um, sometimes down in Oklahoma, but most part, we, we don't require tracks. Yeah. Um, they're like they say, they're harder transport. They'd be more for a farmer probably. And you're not doing so much roading. We do a lot of roading, which really, really wears tracks out um, fast. I suppose going back to the transport side of things that you were talking about there, tell us a little bit about the folding header because obviously that's ideal for transport. Ooh, yes, well that's that'd be a corn head, so we still have to you still have to tow a header lengthways mm -hmm. for transporting as far as driving the combine down the road. You can you you can fold the corn head. It would be about twenty feet wide instead of forty feet unfolded, and so it all sits out in front of you. Yeah. Um, which is, which is pretty nice. It's still wider than the tracks, but it's quite a lot narrower than, than it would be otherwise. Less likely to knock down any signs or anything like that. Yes, less likely. <laughs> less likely. Yeah. Depends who's driving. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, then in regards to the process of servicing the X9, now I understand you had it on a trial kind of basis, so mm -hmm. there were lads out with you while you were testing, so they were yeah, kind of helping. They did quite the looking after first, and, but I mean, general maintenance and servicing we did ourselves. Yeah. I mean, there's more going on under the panels, but I mean, there's bound to be. Yeah. There's so much more going on. Um, but it's still relatively simple. It's the same as an S series for a lot, for a lot of the parts. Um, it does, it's got a different engine. It has the new 13.6 litre engine, which is, will be a replacement for the 13.5. I assume, which is what's in a 780 and a 790 now. Yeah. It's a nine litre and a 770. And do you think John Deere's kind of made it easier ma to maintain then? I, it's as easy as, from what I can tell, but I don't take the engine apart, <laughs> change oil filters and fuel filters yeah. maybe and check the oil. But yeah, for the most part, the access is pretty good. The lid, I think on top of the engine bay is, is pretty good. That's probably better than the others. Yeah. What's your actual personal <laughs> opinion then on the machine altogether? Oh, oh, it's a great machine. It's got a lot of 
it's got a lot of nice stuff, especially the cab, really, for me when you're sitting for yeah. so long. And, <laughs> and, it, and it is going to get through more acres and more grain. Um, from what we experienced, about the same amount of fuel per bushel or per acre as what we're using, you just get over ground faster. Um, but whether it's actually for, for a harvester, perhaps not, but it's, it's got its place for yeah. sure. Because do you think, is there merit in buying a new X9 and replacing other combines or like what you were saying to me there, would there be much point with all the splitting up that you do between yeah, the crews? Yeah, it's sometimes it pays as a harvester being able to split up and keep two customers happy. So in theory, you could replace two or three combines with maybe two X9s. You can't keep three people happy. You're only going to keep two, yeah. which doesn't, I, in, it would be nice and probably makes more sense, but that's not how it works really when you're trying to keep someone. I suppose for your operation. But if someone's crop cut, if you've got three guys to go to, you need to be to three places. You can't go to two and tell the other guy you're going to be there next week, mm. you know, because someone else will have done it. So <laughs> That's not what you want. not really. always. Yeah, it sometimes for that, it works out pretty good with the 770s right now. Yeah. Um, and then in regards to headers, like tell us a little bit about the new header and where mm. it's from. The... The head of the, we had a 45 foot head with the X-Dine this time, which is a hinged draper. So it's, um, it doesn't flex like the flex heads we have for cutting for beans, mm -hmm. quite the same, but it hinges in three pieces. So there's a center section and two outer sections, which will either smile or frown is what they call it. So if you're on <laughs> uneven ground, it will, it'll just roll over the top, which for work really well in off ground cutting in wheat. Um, we found, and you can also make it smile when you're driving down the road, which gets you over some more road signs. <laughs> so we found we could get a 45 foot everywhere. We could get a 40 foot flex yeah. head for the most part when yeah. it's still on the front of the combine. And um, like, obviously you were saying the season really runs for, for you from the end of May, beginning of June until the end of November. What was your most enjoyable part of the season? Finishing. <laughs> 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 I don't mind. I mean, I quite enjoy it. You start off in the south where the weather's good and you can just go and you cut a lot of wheat. Um, by the time you get to North Dakota, it sort of drags on a bit because the weather's not normally so good. You're waiting for wheat to dry quite a bit more and it's starting to slow down. So to then get finished there and get started up in fall is quite nice because the pace just picks up again. Uh, it's always better when you're busy, I guess. Yeah. But probably fall, I guess. Once we get going and fall it. Uh, yeah, because you're flat out. Flat out, yeah. Flat out. <laughs> well, that's brilliant, Sam. Thanks a million for having me out today. Um, I know Gareth is going to be giving you a call to mm. have a, just a bit of a quick catch up, I suppose, from his side. Um, but it's been great to get out to you today. And the fact that you've been able to take so much footage over the last season, seeing as we couldn't actually get out, has been a real help. And we're hoping going forward that we might be able to catch up with other operations that are working in other parts of the world where we can get talking to lads that maybe have gone out from Ireland, England and can share mm -hmm. their own experience. So this has been a great starting point and it was great to meet you. Yeah, thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Sam.